Well, good morning, Hillcrest. I uh, wanted to begin today um, with probably one of the most important chapters in the life of Abraham, um, chapter 15. Uh, in one sense, they're all important. They all say different things, uh, different important things. But uh, this one in particular is important in the sense that it sets the stage of a particular covenant that God is going to make with Abraham, as we'll get to in the days and maybe even weeks ahead. It's a long chapter. There's a lot here. Uh, but I want to just read uh, the first two verses and see how that sort of links with what's happened before and what points us forward. So after these things, we'll get to what those things were in just a second. Verse 15, or chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, for I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. So just that first verse then is uh, incredibly important. On the one hand, it points us back to these things, and we can look back at chapter 14 and see, uh, at least in, in this Bible, that the subtitle, or the title, I guess, is Abraham Rescues Lot. Uh, this is after that, that group of kings come and uh, do a little raiding party. Uh, they attack the area where Lot is, Lot and a lot of his family, a lot of his family, um, is captured. Abraham receives news. He goes north with his party. Uh, he defeats these kings. He rescues his nephew. He comes back. Now, as he, res as he comes back, he meets uh, the king of Sodom. Um, he also meets up with Melchizedek, the king of Salem. Um, and Melchizedek, who's the priest of God Most High, blesses Abraham. Abraham gives him a tithe of everything that he had received. And then the king of Sodom tries to make Abraham rich by telling him that he can take, uh, uh, he can take the possessions, just give the people. Uh, but Abraham says um, that he will not have it said that the king of Sodom made him rich. So he takes nothing. So... It's after these things that Abram is uh, back in you know the area that he has chosen for himself when God comes to him and says those words, Fear not, Abram, uh, for I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. Now I imagine that it's easy to, um, to, to not read between the lines. It's, it's always easy to not do something, to not read between the lines here. But if God is coming to Abram in the night and saying to Abram, fear not, then the high likelihood is, is that Abraham was afraid. Uh, and this has got a lot of reasons to be afraid. Uh, on the one hand, he's got a group of kings uh, that he has defeated in battle. Um, people don't like to be defeated, uh, even raiding parties. And kings, uh, even dead kings, tend to have you know sons and nephews and second cousins twice removed who... Uh, decide it's a good idea one day to go and take revenge. Um, even the king of Sodom could be upset with Abraham. Um, he wanted to make him rich. He wanted to basically kind of put Abraham in his debt, and Abraham said no. And on the one hand, maybe the king of Sodom was happy about that because he doesn't have to give up the goods. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, he was sort of made to look a fool, maybe in front of his entourage, certainly in front of the king of Salem. And so um, I imagine Abraham is up most nights worried. Uh, the whole incident with Lot has just demonstrated how precarious his situation is. Uh, I mean, he took his army or his, you know, his band north uh, to defeat those kings and was able to defeat them sort of on his own. Uh, he was able to choose you know, how he was going to do that. But if they raided in the middle of the night when all your people are asleep and you have you know, a handful of sentries awake, uh, again, I, I imagine Abraham spends most evenings staring at the underside of his tent, wondering uh, when the next thing is going to happen, the next calamity. And so it's in that sense that the Lord comes to him and says to him, fear not. And we have to understand that this is more than just a platitude. This is more than just something that God says. Uh, it's a command. It is a command to Abraham. Abraham if you understood me, if you understood who I am, you would not be afraid. If you understood that I am your shield, if you understood that I am the one who protects you, that yes, you put out sentries at night, yes, you have you know, you, the young men 
uh, wander the fields and during the day just to make sure nothing's stolen. Uh, you know, you protect your property. Um, you know, you got a sword by the door. If not a shotgun, but you got a sword by the door just in case. But at the end of the day, Abraham, I am the one who is your shield. I am the one who protects you. And so there's a promise in this. There's a command, don't be afraid, but there's also that promise, I am your shield. And we also see that, at least in, this is the uh, English Standard Version, the ESV, puts that last portion as a promise, your reward shall be very great. And that certainly is one possible way uh, to render what God says to Abraham. It's also possible that what Abraham or what God is actually saying is a little bit is a little bit simpler. Um, the the words shall be are not in the text, uh, but Hebrew often doesn't have verbs. Um, the verbs, especially uh, the any form of the verb to be, am, is, are, will be, etc., is often is often left out. And if it's not there, then it's usually understood. But sometimes it's left out on purpose, and I think it's at least possible that that's what's going on here, that God is actually saying to Abraham, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield, your very great reward. And one of the things that Abraham then is, is to understand that God is speaking to him is that uh, there, there's no need to fear your enemies, but there's also no need to fear that you will not be rich. Remember that, that God has promised marvelous things. You will be a king. Uh, you will have uh, a great people. Uh, uh, your wealth in terms of offspring will be uncountable, Abraham. And so here, Abraham, uh, God is saying to him, do not think that you lost anything when you gave up those goods. When you said to the king of Sodom, I will not have it be said that you made me rich. You have not lost anything because I am your great reward. There is, you have me. You cannot lose me. This is what God is saying. You have me. You cannot lose me. And there is nothing worth trading me for. Now, I think that this is a very important message to Abraham. It's a very important message to us. Um, you know, there are not roving bands of kings uh, coming around, although, depending on where you live, this world has been become a little bit more dangerous in the last month or so. Um, probably not for most of the people who are going to be watching this video, but maybe for you know people we know, people we care about, are in very similar situations. They're in uh, parts of the country where there's uh, you know protests, which is fine, but then also we continue to see uh, rioting and burning and some things. Uh, so it would be very easy for us to be afraid. But also, it's easy for us, even outside of physical danger, it's easy for us to greatly offend people by our righteousness. I mean, Abraham risks greatly offending the king of Sodom by refusing to take his riches. He does what's righteous, he does what's right and good, and yet it's very easy uh, to offend. And so, again, that's not necessarily to say that there's physical danger for us, but certainly is a great possibility uh, for uh, you know retribution or uh, just you know, the, the, the lesser forms of persecution that happen more regularly in, in our day and age. And God is saying the same thing to us. If, if you are children of Abraham, if you are those who put their faith and their trust in the promises that God makes, um, then God is saying the same thing to us. There's no need to fear. Uh, there, there's nothing... There's nothing worth being afraid of if you know this God, uh, if you love this God, if this God has placed his covenant love upon you, then he is your shield. And nothing is going to happen to you. Nothing is going to come upon you um, that is going to overtake the one who protects you. Um, and even if you give up the whole world, even if you give up all the world's goods, your reward is infinitely greater than anything this world can offer because your reward is the Lord of hosts. Your reward is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Christ, uh, who received that sacrifice on your behalf and who uh, raised Christ up from the dead. And so, uh, brothers and sisters, dear brothers and sisters, fear not, for God is your shield 
and he is your very great reward. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you this morning for that reminder, particularly in the midst of a world that is seemingly out of control in so many ways that you are in control. And so, Father, you are our shield. You are our great reward. We pray that you would enable us by your strength and power to not be afraid, to trust you, and to do all that you command us to do, to walk before you and be blameless, to trust your promises, uh, to continue uh, pursuing a life of righteousness by faith. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, God bless you guys. Hopefully the uh, wandering Amish buggies wasn't too loud. And I'll see you again on Thursday.